Hello everybody, I'm Bill Harris and this is Life Questions. We're happy you could join us for what promises to be a good discussion centered around questions about life. Questions that you, our viewers, have sent us. Now, we have forwarded your questions to our panel of local pastors for research and review and they are now with us uh, with their findings and I'd like you to meet them at this time. First up, we have Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church followed by Pastor Neil Whitney of the church at Allentown. And rounding off our panel is Pastor Rick Shear of Living Hope Assemblies of God in St. Mary's. Lady and gentlemen, happy to have you with us today. Happy to be here. <laughs> you know, one of the um, things, one of the questions I should say that we got in is about prayer. And you know, we can never get enough of talking about prayer because it's something that people tend not to do until there's a pressing need. Yeah. And, and we, we gotta really get, get rid of that approach. Um, how important is prayer is what this viewer is writing? Uh, do our prayers actually prompt God to act? Does this mean God doesn't act if we don't pray? Uh, if he is really all powerful and capable, why are our prayers so important? Doesn't he know, uh, th doesn't he know all and can make things happen without us even calling on him? It's a, it's a good question. Why, 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 does, why does God want us to pray? God is love. Mm -hmm. Love's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. So I believe God's our best friend. And I believe I'm his best friend. Along with everybody else that loves him. <laughs> and for me, it's about relationship. If God loves, that means God cares. Mm -hmm. So, since he cares, we need to be in touch. Mm -hmm. What about the fact that we've got so much going on in this world? I mean, at, at our taping on March 1st, 2022, well, we, we see that Russia is at war with uh, the Ukraine. Um, now, and everybody else seems to be giving their opinions around the world about it and giving a lot of support toward the UK, uh, Ukraine. Now, is that something we should be praying about? And if so, how do we pray about that? Well, you know, scripture definitely tells us that we need to be praying for our leaders and our government, even if we don't agree with them, they've been placed above us. And it, it talks about that. But Philippians 4, uh, 6 and 7, I, I think people leave out 7 too many times. Mm -hmm. But 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with gratitude, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will protect your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians 4 what? Uh, uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. 6 and 7, okay. And I think it's so important for us to understand that uh, this is a reminder to us as believers that we need to be praying, uh, especially for situations that are going on. Anytime we feel anxious, you know, uh, who isn't anxious that gas prices aren't going up, that are going up? Mm -hmm. Who isn't anxious that, that things, uh, the price of everything seems to be going yes. up? And then we see turmoil in the world. We've seen turmoil for the last two years. And yet scripture reminds us, tells us, Jesus tells us, and then uh, Philippians reminds us that we should be doing that instead of being anxious about things. We should be turning things over to God and allowing him to, uh, as it says, and the peace of God mm -hmm. will come upon us. And so that's where we've got to focus. And that's really the importance of prayer. You know, mm -hmm. um, again, going back to what you were saying, I agree 100%. You know, that is our mode of communication with God in the New Testament. It was, it was in the Old Testament as well, but God walked with people, you know, um, angels and uh, come and spoke to uh, uh, people in the Old Testament. However, prayer is our mode of communication with Amen. God in the New Testament. And mm -hmm. without it, how can there be a relationship? Right. You know, we wouldn't go weeks without talking to our spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Walsh, you want to chime in? I, I think of it as um, if I would compare it as a child growing up, if I became anxious about yeah. something or nervous or concerned about something, I wanted to go to my parents to uh, confide in them, mm -hmm. get comfort, and I received peace from them because they would make me feel better sure. about things. Yeah. So who are we Absolutely. going to go to? None other than our Heavenly Father yeah. who loves us. Mm -hmm. And when we go to him, he can fill us with that sense of peace, knowing that everything's going to be okay because he's the one that ultimately is in control of everything. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's, it's, it's submitting to God, but it's also acknowledging that He is in control of everything and the fact that we know we are dependent on Him to take care of and to meet all of our needs. You know, in First Timothy, <clears throat> second chapter, it, it talks about the command the Lord gives us to pray for those in authority. And it says that when we do this, we can lead a quiet and peaceful life. I mean, and who doesn't want a quiet and peaceful <laughs> life? Uh, but, but the importance of praying for those who are in authority. Do you think maybe there's not enough emphasis on this? Uh, I, because I think we tend to, sometimes we go along party lines. I'll pray if the guy in there is doing things the way I like for it to be done. If the guy doesn't, I'm not praying. <laughs> right. not, pe not that people say that, but. Oh, we would never yeah, say, that, we would never think of saying that. <laughs> and yet our actions tell a whole different story. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with you. I think too many times we put prayer as the last thing we do rather than the first thing we do. Yeah. Um, you know, well, if the medical treatment isn't working, I guess I'll go to the church leaders and pray. When it, Scripture commands us to go and pray and get prayed over and get anointed, and, uh, you know, it should be the first thing. Medical treatment is a gift of God. I believe that. That's sure, what I believe. Sure, That's sure. what, and, and so it is answered prayer. So why aren't we praying first mm -hmm. and then doing the treatment? Mm -hmm as the answer to, from God. I just, I, you know, we get so hung up on only praying when we need to, yeah. rather than in the good times. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody believes in God in a foxhole. <laughs> 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 and, but we don't always show that in the midst of the good times. What about, you know, I'm putting a message, I'm putting a sermon together now about uh, praying in the morning and the importance of doing that first thing out of the bed, you know, or even before you get out of bed, you know, make, make the first person you touch bases with be your God, your Savior. Um, the importance of getting your day started with the Lord is where I'm coming from. How, how does that strike you? I That's do that all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I do every morning is pray. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a good morning God person. <laughs> I like that too. I, I, I could put myself in that well, category because I'm a morning is, person. Prayer is a form of worship. We're worshiping sure, sure. our Heavenly Father and why would we not want to praise Him in the morning, especially when we right. start a day out because we've been blessed with another day by Him, to serve Him, to bring Him glory, to be used by Him to impact the lives of others. And I think that helps us get focused in a positive way to start the day out. Mm -hmm. Charles Spurgeon said that really if a prayer lasts five minutes, that's long enough, as long as the next one starts within five minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Paul said, pray without ceasing. Yes. 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 I and I would challenge the, the idea of mourning. I think there's nothing wrong with mourning. I think we live in a society though that mourning is not the start of everyone's day. That's true. And so I think more start of the day would be a better, better way of, uh, of addressing that mm -hmm. rather than morning. Because mm -hmm. third, third shift people, that morning is not their start of the day, it's their end of the day. Yeah. And so if they've just worked an entire shift without praising God, without praying to God, then they've missed an opportunity there. Good point, good point. So it, 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 and to put it in good context then, whatever time your day starts, yes making sure yes. you're touching bases with heaven. Well, yeah. and I like to think of it as just having a conversation with my best friend. Exactly. So continuously, it's it continuously is correct. We have all of our time. He's with us all the time. We can have that conversation with him all the time throughout the day. So praying without ceasing is acknowledging God throughout the day that he's right there with us every step of the way. Anybody have any suggestions, any ideas about how to approach God in, in prayer? How do you begin? And how do you, how do you get heaven's attention? I begin by thanking him. I mean, I thank him for, in my, first, the start of every prayer I do, thanks God for who he is. You know, because again, we can't be focused on what he does or doesn't do in our prayer and our thanksgiving. It's got to be for simply who he is. Um, because life, is, life isn't perfect. And if we only thank him for the things that he does or doesn't do, then we're, we're, we're missing who he is. Mm -hmm. So I always begin by, by just thanking him for who he is mm -hmm. and th then thanking him for an, another opportunity for today, another opportunity to, to come to the th throne room and uh, reach him. 
I There's a it. simple acronym, ACTS, A-C-T-S, uh -huh. and it stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication, oh. Asking. Oh. So that's a, that's a process I use. Good. You adore Excellent. God, you confess your sins to Him, you thank Him, and then you get around to what you need. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it put another way one time too, in that praise is when you're actually thanking God for what He has done. done right. Worship is when you are in fact pra uh, worshiping Him for who He is. Yeah, that's right. yeah. You know, Thanksgiving, yeah. that, that word speaks for itself, you're giving thanks of course. Well, and I think people need to understand that there are times that I'm upset and I'm angry yeah. mm -hmm. and I'll go to him and vent my frustrations Can't and so that's not <laughs> um, there's somebody at this table that maybe could acknowledge no but I am <laughs> angry upset I'll go to him so I'm not praising him for blessing me with another day I'm not I am angry and upset but he's pleased because I came to him with it because sometimes I'll just keep it bottled up and I don't want to talk to God either. Yeah. So people need to understand that it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily always going to start out with praising Him. Mm -hmm. It may end up that way sure, once you sure, work right. through and yeah. God reveals things to you. Mm -hmm. But I think He's just pleased when we come to Him no matter what yeah. the situation. My producer was chiming in, Jennifer. She says that we see that in the Psalms a lot. <laughs> And that, that yeah. is so true. Yeah. That is yeah. so true. We exactly. absolutely do. And, and I like the way the Bible keeps it real. Mm -hmm. And you just kept it real. I mean, here you are, Pastor, sitting here being that some things do anger you. And that's, that's reality. And, and people can relate to that. Right. And I but don't you always, give it to him. I don't always do the right thing initially, yeah. but eventually God gets a hold of me. And, and that, we, isn't that human? Yes. I mean, isn't that just human? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, that's if we did the right thing all the time, every time, you know, we wouldn't have needed Jesus Christ to die. And, you know, but it, he's there so we can come back to it. We circle it, around it to it. It kind of sometimes it reminds me of like having dealt with parents that were upset when I had conferences. You kind of let them vent. <laughs> oh, yeah. For a while, run out of steam. Sure. <laughs> and then it's like you get to that point. OK, you're ready to listen. God will do that with us also. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. He kind of puts you on his couch, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we've got to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to change the subject. And another one of the viewer questions uh, has to do with David, King David, at one point in time when he decided to number his troops to see how big of an army he had. And God was not exactly pleased with that. And we'll deal with that in a moment. But stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Well, thank you for staying with us. Now, before we get to that question that I teased going into the break, I, we, we need to finish up on the question we were on. The viewer writes us that uh, doesn't God know all and can't he make things happen without us even calling on him? That's a, that's a good point to make right there. What, what do you think about that, Pastor? Well, I think about Abraham and trying to save the people of Sodom and he asked, he asked God and I don't know if you can say God changed his mind because God knows the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was part of God's plan for Abraham to talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. And we should, too. And uh, what about the time when Abraham was actu actually bargaining with God over Sodom and Gomorrah, saying, if I, if I can find people, well, 50 people right. in the city that are righteous, will you save it? And, and then he said, what, what if I find 40? You know? and what if I find 30? He brought it all the way down, and still he couldn't find the number that he had, that he had suggested. And so the cities, well, the twin cities were destroyed. But God did go right along with him yes. in that bargaining process. Isn't it well, so? he was praying. And he was bargaining, as you, as you put it, he was bargaining for what God's heart would be. 
God's heart would be for compassion, mm -hmm. uh, for love, and, and for mercy upon Good people. Mm -hmm. And so he was actually bargaining the will of God in the midst of that, because God didn't want to destroy the city. He didn't want to destroy the, uh, the people. Uh, and so, and Abraham didn't want to see that either. So he was within God's will. You know, mm -hmm. we ask, we can ask for anything if it's in God's will. That's and so key. that we got to, we got to make sure we're focused on that. And God wants the communication with us. I think we talked about that a second ago, mm -hmm. that God wants that communication. And that's why uh, we need to be praying. Yes, God can move. He can do anything he wants. He created us from nothing. However, he wants his people to move. But when, when we're dealing with crisis, for instance, uh, like, like, for instance, what's been going on in, between Russia and the Ukraine, you, aren't our prayers very important at a time like that? I mean, God, although he owns everything in the whole universe, he turned the earth over to man. Man subsequently forfeited uh, everything and it was turned over to the devil. The Bible says that the devil is the God of this world. But now with Christ having risen from the grave and, and been on the cross, we don't we need to take things back from the devil that was originally given to mankind and in the sense that we have the authority to pray to God to make change to pray about we talked about this earlier in the first segment about praying for Ukraine and the like and and the uh, the, the heads of state there but uh, don't we have that authority and shouldn't we speak out with that authority to talk to God in behalf of others whatever the circumstances are don't we have that power? You're looking at me like I've got a disease. <laughs> no, 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 no. We absolutely have that power. No, uh, we, we absolutely, I think it's even beyond a power. We have that responsibility uh, to do that. We, we need to be, because the world doesn't. The world doesn't even understand. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you don't even understand the need for prayer. You don't even understand the desire for prayer or the power of prayer. And so as the believer, especially now, as a believer, we have to be taking our responsibility mm -hmm. of praying for the situations in the world. Now, I will say this, and this is going to be controversial, and I know it's going to be controversial, but I think you like that, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides are praying uh -huh. to the same God, yes, believing in the same power of God. Which side's right? <laughs> yeah, everybody's claiming to have the corner on God. Exactly, yeah. and that's, yeah. the way, that's the way it always is. And, uh, and so we've got to make sure that we're tuned in with God and not just uh, focusing on the things that we want our side to be, but what God's will will be. Mm. And I think that's the, the, the power, the importance, and the responsibility of prayer. Very well put. Okay, let's end it on that. <laughs> um, another question here uh, that I'm sure you all have had time to research. In Second Samuel chapter 24, uh, King David feels led of himself to count his troops to see how big of an army he's got and what kind of firepower he's got there. And, and that move angered God. And uh, the, the viewer that writes the question wants to know here, well, what's the big deal about King David n numbering his troops and how come it's wrong to count people? Because <laughs> as you know, David paid a stiff penalty because he, he did that. Right. You talk about what went wrong there and, and, and why. Who wants to take that first? Well, I think, I, I think first of all, we've got to look at Second Samuel 24. And it does talk about God being angry. And he incited him to, to count the people. But then if we go to Chronicles, First Chronicles 21.1, it says, Now Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. You know, there seems to be a contradiction there. And I think that's kind of where the confusion of the question is coming mm -hmm. from. Uh, was it Satan or was it God? Now, the thing is, God can use Satan to get his will done. And in this particular situation, he was angry with the nation and he was frustrated. So he allowed Satan to place the idea of counting uh, in David's heart. And David had a choice. Yes. See, that's the Excellent. whole thing. Isn't it? Isn't David it? had a choice, and yet he chose to go ahead and follow what Satan said, what Satan was enticing him to do. And so I think that it was a, a, a sin of pride, not a sin of counting. There's nothing wrong with counting people. However, if that becomes a, a, a point of pride, I have X amount of soldiers, I have X amount of this, I have X amount of that, then that becomes the sin of pride in the heart. And I yeah. believe that's yeah. where David was. He was in the sin of pride, yeah. uh, of over 
trusting God. He was trusting the numbers. I feel like that David was uh, relying upon his own strength Military and right. taking control mm -hmm. of wanting to be in absolute control instead of putting his faith where he needed to put his faith was in God. And if you kind of relate that to what David did, we can either give in to the things of the world here mm -hmm. and build up things here, or we can be focused on God and following his leading and doing what he instructs mm -hmm. us to do and relying upon the fact knowing that he's in control of everything. Yeah. I, think, I think to that end too, some people have their faith and confidence in their 401k. Yes. You know, rather than in God, uh, because God can do more for you than your 401k, the 401k plus, if we look to God. But, um, and, and that's one thing we tend to put our trust in, isn't it, money? Yeah. 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 And I also think it points to the fact that, like was stated, David had a choice, yeah. and he made his choice based on things of the world, and we also have choices that we can make, but we're not in control of our consequences of our choices. Yeah. 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 It's a very difficult topic because, <laughs> like, where is your decision-making center? Mm -hmm. Where's your decision-making center? Is it your mind, your will, your emotions, or is it your heart? And the Bible tells us really clearly that the decision-making center of a Christian's body is your heart. Mm -hmm. And David was operating in his flesh yeah. when he did that. Yeah. And I agree, it was pride. It was pride. Yeah. You know, and, and, and David did that actually a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like all of us do, let's be honest. <laughs> like all of us do. And yet God said he was a man after his own heart. I was just about to ask you, how, why would God say that? if in fact he went wrong so many times. Because he was human, that's why he went uh -huh. wrong. Uh -huh. And yet his desire was to see God worshiped uh -huh. and God uh, on the throne. He, he wanted to do right, just like most of us want to do right. Mm -hmm. The and, reason he could say that was because David repented mm -hmm. yeah. and God yeah. chose yep. to yeah. forget. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like for the rest of us. Amen. That's what the blood of Jesus is all about. Amen. And I think you can go back to this, well, he made a bad decision, the wrong decision. He didn't take necessarily the time or seek out what he needed to. You can bring prayer back into this, how we need to go to God in prayer for guidance. We need to go to right. God's word and we need to go to other Christians mm -hmm. to help give us different perspectives to truly uh, help us get focused in on what God is truly leading us to do. Okay. Well, another question that comes in, I hope we've got enough time to deal with this. Are there levels of sin? For example, is murder worse than gossip? The Bible talks about uh, an unforgivable sin too, and that is the one that, um, that offers no forgiveness. Um, are there levels of sin? Do you, do, do, do you weigh them, one being more weighty than the other? How I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think, we, you know, obviously we don't put people in prison for gossip. However, it's just as murderous as pulling a trigger. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, I think in God's sight, God's mind, sin is sin. Because he calls sin even the thought. Mm-hmm. And so I think in God's eyes, there are no levels. Sin is sin. And I think when we understand that concept, then we do become more repentant mm -hmm. and, and more focused on that. I think our number one sin is what is talked about in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, where it talks about you have forgotten your first love. Yeah, yeah. And I think that is the, the number one issue. And then the second part of that, yeah. the unforgivable sin, uh, I think if anybody's concerned about the unforgivable sin, they haven't committed it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think what we do is we stop thinking and concerning ourselves about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what it is. Yeah, and we just don't <laughs> care. And so if there's any care, any thought at all about that, I believe that we have not committed it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. How about, um, does it matter whether a person is buried or cremated? 
I once had, this viewer says, I once had a pastor tell me that Christians uh, should not be cremated. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, pa pastor uh, Kelly Walsh? I don't mm -hmm. know of anything in the Bible that is against being cremated. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to get cremated because, and then some people said ashes spread out all over. How is God supposed to bring you back together in a new body? But then we're talking about God here, and nothing is impossible with God. He knows what to do with dust, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he created us from dust. He can, re he can right. recreate us from dust. I, I think actually scripture talks about, 1 Samuel 31, 11 through 13, talks about Saul and his sons being burnt because they were coming, they, they had just lost the battle, Saul and his sons were just killed, and the, the Philistines were uh, mutilating their bodies and they were trying to protect the bodies. So they, they burned the bodies in protection. I think that's a, that's a perfect example of, of someone being cremated. I think this is a, a vital question today. Funerals are expensive, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that the idea that cremation is wrong is is wrong i think that that concept that theory is wrong and i believe that there is plenty of scriptural reference re referencing that it's okay uh, and if god created us from dust he can recreate us from dust there's no there's no uh, uh, a miss there and and i think job says it that it just doesn't matter it, you know it just doesn't matter so to answer that question no it doesn't matter and maybe there's cause for concern because you look at Jesus he was crucified he was buried in the tomb mm -hmm. and then he was the resurrection took sure. place and so maybe you know we're become we're supposed to become less like ourselves more like the image of Jesus so then maybe around death there's that well I need to be like Jesus mm -hmm. buried oh. and right. not cremated Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to end it there. We're running out of time. Uh, listen, this panel will be back with us again next week on this program, so make sure you stu uh, t stay tuned in for next week's program as well. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.